Random J Productions presents the Palm Summer League. Today we're here at the Tennessee Super Speedway in Mountain City for this year's running of the Pepsi Summer Kickoff. On this beautiful Memorial Day afternoon, 35 of racing's best drivers all ready and lined up here in the back straightaway, just moments away from the start of the 2024 season. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Josh, your commentator for today's race. And once again, we are here at another massive super speedway to kick off yet another summer series. Now the old saying goes, a lot can change in a year, and it's no different here in the Palm Summer League. Not only do we have some new faces in the field this year, but also new teams, new tracks, and most importantly, more races, giving more opportunities for drivers in this new expanded field to win and score more points. And now one thing that hasn't changed, the pole sitter for the summer kickoff, Brad Reem. Despite this being at a completely different track, Brad and Rail fan are still able to capture the pole for the summer kickoff for the second year in a row. Although with how chaotic these super speedways typically are, only time will tell to see how long that six team will remain up in the front. Speaking of Rail fan, we cannot go without mentioning last year's Palm Summer League champion, Brendan Beal, as he and the Jet Blue Boys look to pick off where they left off last year. But despite winning the championship, Buell actually went winless last summer and is looking to add some new hardware right off the bat. As for drivers that did win some hardware last year, there was last year's summer kickoff winner Jordan Forbes, this time with a brand new two-car team looking for his second channel win. And finally, there was reigning Firecracker 400 winner, the 40 of Nick Sant. He's won two out of the last four Super Speeder races on this channel, being not only one of the favorites to win here today, but also one of the favorites to win the championship, looking to avenge his runner-up finish from last summer. Of course, nothing is ever guaranteed in racing, and there's no exception at these super speedways, and it's certainly no exception here in the Palm Summer League. But before we get this exciting afternoon underway, let's first take a look at our starting lineup and pre-race ceremonies for the first time here in 2024. So as previously mentioned, on the pole for the second year in a row in this race is Brad Ream in the 6, and excellent fellow channel veteran Brendan Carruther is in the 20. Row 2, our highest starting rookie, Skyler Taylor in the 29, and next to them, Jordan Stout in the 11. Row 3, we got another rookie, Madison Chase in the 06, and next to her, Ryan Wilson, the 2022 Golf Summer Series champion, back in his familiar Pepsi number 48. We got an all-rookie row number 4, Jack Cross in the 57, and next to him, the Madhouse Classic winner, Alex Santavella in the 99. Row 5, Daniel Voiles in the 01, and next to him, another rookie, Kyle Sustry in the 19. Yet another rookie in row number 6, Riley Spurley in the 28, and next to him, the aforementioned heavy favorite of Nick Sand in the 40. Row 7, Matthew Burnett, this time in number 2 this year, and next to him, Nathan Stapleton once again in the 97. Row 8, the 84 of Jason Albert, and the 9 of Lipsy. Row 9, another rookie, Bubble Pop in the 18, and Caleb Rose, the winner of the last PSL race in Minnesota. Row 10, Anthony Hernandez, and next to him, the familiar face of Matthew Hill making his first ever PSL start. Row 11, defending series champion Brendan Beal, and Johnny Hernandez in the 46. Row 12, the SL Bear champion from a few years ago, Keisha Erston back in the 24, and Patrick Miller back in the 33. Row 13, Alex Mullen once again in the number one, and Jordan Forbes, the winner of this race last year at Coca-Cola. Row 14, Random J making his return to Pontiac, while the 79 Jose Angel Gutierrez was one of the very few Pontiacs from last year. Row 15, Ross McTrain in the 45, and Dylan Matthews in the 49. Row 16, former showdown winner Roberto Crown, and Philip Torres in the 41. Row 17, Joe T in the 8, and Dan Mattiel in the 17. And finally, row number 18, the 2020 Golf Summer Series champion, Callan Baker. 
taking a look at the track info here for today's race. We're going to go 24 laps on this three mile long super speedway with 34 degrees of banking in the corners while 21 degrees of banking on the backstretch trioval. Now, of course, the trioval at most super speedways and most tracks in general are towards the front stretch, but this time around it's in the backstretch, which is, of course, something very unique about this track and going to be interesting to see how it, gonna tra how it translates when it comes to the actual racing. But of course, as for what I hear today in Mountain City, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, or four mile per inch towards the southwest. A beautiful, beautiful day for racing. And of course, last year's summer kickoff winner, Jordan Forbes in 2023 at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway over in Massachusetts. And as for one of our new segments this year, say hello to the number bot. So the number bot is going to randomly choose a car number, and that will be its prediction to win. It looks like for this race, it chose number 06, Madison Chase, who's going to start fifth here in today's race. And now it's time for a pre-race ceremony starting with our national anthem. And now, for the first time in 2024 for the Palm Summer League, it is time to hear the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines! Now, of course, with this being a track no one in the field has ever raced at before, it's going to naturally present some challenges and unknowns to both these drivers and teams. For some more insight on this, let's dial up a former Golf Summer Series champion. Hey, Baker, is Josh up in the booth got a copy? Yes, sir, I got you. Hey, man, obviously you have a lot of experience racing on this channel, but what's your approach as a driver when you race at new tracks we've never raced at before? So, it's all about looking at it like almost racing at another track. You look at Tennessee like we're racing at the first race. It's got that trioval, but it's on the back stretch. Much like Talladega, and it's the handling really, you know, varies when you're on that flatter trioval. So it all it's all based on, you know, perspective. You know, the wrecks can't happen on that back dog leg. But, you know, we'll see. All right, man. Good luck out there. Stay safe. Have a good time. All righty. Thank you. Oh, it's real, real cool to talk to these drivers before these races. But before we get started, I do, do want to say a few additional things. Of course, a huge, huge thank you to everyone who signed up for the Palm Summer League this year, all of our amazing painters, as well as our amazing admins on the server. But for now, it is time to get things started. As the pace truck is down pit road, the crowd's all on their feet, ready for the start of the 2024 Palm Summer League.
Just out there during the start, drivers were almost four wide going into turn number one. But that action doesn't seem to be stopping going into turn number three. Here's Bastion Chase looking to the inside of Skylar Taylor. And already a lot of these rookies are making their way up towards the front. See Riley Spurley three wide with Voyles and Ream. While Jack Costin and the 57 is also inside this mix as well. Already three wide coming to complete the first lap here in the 2024 season. Looks like Bastion Chase barely led that time by. As she remains in the middle, still three wide going into turn number one. So he towards the pack of the pack. Brendan Beal make it four wide as he's way up on the racetrack in the 37. As Riley Spurley of Fulf and Matthew Renee gets a strong run off turn number two. Of course, the lap times at these three mile long super speedways are much longer compared to other tracks. I mean, you can really go from first to somewhere in the mid teens in just a few span of a few seconds or so. When you look at Brittany Crowder, he started second place in the 20, and now he's already towards the middle of the pack. But continuing down this long trial, Will Spurrow is all by himself in the middle with Burnett moving up to the outside, with Jason Albert fast approaching on the inside, going into turn number three. Through turns three and four, Spurrow is going to move to the outside in front of Burnett, leaving Albert and Bubble now the way two drivers on the inside of Fernandez, now three wide of Richardson and Madison Chase behind those four. Off of four, Albert's going to take the lead away from Spurley, who of course is still looking for that first channel one after four years, but it was Bubble in her first start looking to the inside of Albert for the lead, coming to lap number three this time by. She's going to force 84 up towards the middle with Albert having absolutely no help at all going into turn number one. Uh, she's now going to get help from both the Atlanta cars, Aki Sharish and Random J. And you saw there both briefly, both Anthony Hernandez and Alex Mullen briefly made it four wide going into turn number two before the two of them were quickly able to sort that out as they head down this long bash stress trial once again. And now here's Richardson forcing Bubble to the middle, opening door for both he and Random. But as I say there, here's Random looking to the inside of his teammate as we're once again three wide for the lead going into turn number three. Oh, well, contact, Voyles, Baker, Lipsy into the wall. And oh my god, Voyles is on his roof, now on his side, and is now going to barrel roll violently, flipping numerous times down the steep banking towards the grass until fortunately and finally landing on all four tires towards the entrance of turn number four. And suffice to say, this is going to bring out our first caution of the day. See Callan Baker with heavy damage to his number 21. The Knight of Lipsty coming down pit road with heavy right side damage to his car as well. Some decent front end damage as well. But wow, that did not take long at all for our first ever caution here in the 2024 Palm Summer League. And we're looking scoreboard that time by the 53 of Random J. Was your leader, followed by the 41 of Mopar, the 31 of Roberto Crown Jr., Dan Matteo in the 17, and Jason Albert in the 84. But anyways, let's take a look at the instant replay to see what caused that violent, violent flip from the old one of Daniel Voiles. So all this started on the backstretch trial. Watch Lipsy in the 9 and Kellen Baker in the 21 towards the center right of your screen as they are four wide with Daniel Voiles up top and Ross McTrain in the bottom. So Baker and Lipsy get a good run, remain four wide off the trial and going into turn number three. It looks like Baker just ran Lipsy out of room collected Daniel Wills in the process going on his roof and flipping uh, I can't even count how many times he flipped but regardless very very violent violent flips for the L1 so finally unfortunately coming out on all four tires laying to rest so taking a listen to slow motion, so you just see Baker running Lipsy out of room with Daniel Voiles being a pure victim absolutely nothing he could have done there and as I mentioned, all three cars go spinning into the turn three wall with Voiles having a hard lick on that right side passenger side. And the impact was hard enough to send this car on his side, sliding right across Baker's hood. And at one point, sliding right across Baker's windshield on the passenger side. Thank God that wasn't really towards the driver's side. And then after that second slide across Baker's windshield, Voiles goes tumbling, barrel rolling multiple times. Now this very, very steep banking. Definitely one of the most violent tumbles I have seen. I've seen we've seen a lot of flips at super speedways before, but this is definitely one of the most violent tumbles and flips I've seen in quite some time. And honestly, probably the worst thing about this flip was the fact as Voyles kept tumbling, tumbling down the track, the flips were just faster, faster, more violent. So finally, unfortunately, coming all four tires. Just what a, what a scary, scary wreck for the old one. Let's go on board with Lipsy going into turn number three. So you can just see Baker running Lipsy out of room. There was enough room for four, even five cars at this track because this track is pretty wide. But definitely a big misjudgment on Baker's part. Speaking of which, let's go on board with Callan Baker to see his point of view. 
about the guess maybe a miscommunication with the spotter or something. Whoopsie was there the entire time, but just did not see him. My goodness, saw Voiles right on top of Baker's hood. On board of Cowers let's try. So it's happened right in front of him. Yeah, Baker just did not see Whoopsie at all on his right side. But a great miss for one of your rookies here. And finally, on board of Daniel Voiles. Hold on, folks. This is going to be a wild, wild ride. Oh my god, looks like that was so bad. In fact, we lost one of our cameras. Well, there goes thousands of dollars right there. Anyways, we're already under caution for the first time here in the 2024 Palm Summer Week for this violent, violent flip for Daniel Boyles here at the Tennessee Super Speedway. Welcome back to the Tennessee Super Speedway for this year's edition of the Pepsi Summer Kickoff, the opening race of the 2024 Palm Summer League. Right now, we're about to go back green after a three-car wreck going into turn number three that involved the 2020 Golf Summer Series champion, Callan Baker, the nine of Lipsy, one of the Royal Fan Cars, and of course, Daniel Voiles in the L1. Went tumbling multiple times down turns three and four until finally, thankfully, landing on all four tires. As right now, he's the only car out of the race and done for the day. While Baker and Lipsy, the two aforementioned drivers, are still in the race, albeit with heavy, heavy damage to their cars. Currently, as for your top five, the 53 of Random J is first, followed by Philip Torres in the 41, the 31 for Berto Crown Jr., the 17 of Dan Mattiel, while Jason Albert in the 80 car runs off the rest of this top five. But anyways, as the pace truck continues down pit road, we're going to be back under green here in Tennessee, lap number 6 at 24. And already Keisha Richardson going into turn number 1 is going to waste absolutely no time, going 3 wide on the outside. But on a 4 tree, he's going to have absolutely no one else behind to help. Richardson still stuck on the outside off to continue with ground, this time being three wide with both Spiroli and Hernandez, while his teammate Random J continues to lead, coming towards the backstretch trioval. Random's going to move to the middle. Alex at the valve forces a three wide going to the trioval as he's going to force Crown towards the middle. It's an almost four wide with Alex Mullen peeking his nose to the inside there. Random trying to box Santa Vala going into turn number three, but Santa Vala is there, forcing Random to the outside as we're going to be side by side for the lead going into turn number four. And <laughs> not even one lap after this restart, everyone this pack is already back in a three by three formation on back. As now off of four, Santa Vala is going to move up the track. Here comes Shawnee Hernandez now side by side for the lead coming to lap number seven. Santa Vala barely led that time by, but remains stuck on the outside of Hernandez still side by side going into turn number one. And with help from the fellow Sherry's with Alex Moen and his son Anthony Hernandez, Johnny looks like he's going to have the advantage over Santa Vala off turn number two this time by. And they see towards the bottom of the screen, Jordan Flores and Ross McTrain. They're making contact off of two, as those two are going to be four wide of Dan Mattiel on the outside and Brad Dereem on the inside. But as that happens at the same time, here's Moen looking to the inside of Johnny for the lead, as he's going to force a 46 up the track. But right behind the one car is Anthony Hernandez looking to the inside of Moen, as they're once again going to be three wide for the lead going into turn number three. Anthony Hernandez knows the thing or two about winning these super speeder races as he of course won the 2021 Geico 500 at Talladega back in the Golf Summer Series. With that said race being the last time today Anthony has won on this channel and is looking to break that nearly three year long winning streak coming to lap number eight and coming to our first crank it up of the 2024 season.
is lap number 12 of 24 here at Tennessee. It is currently a side-by-side -side battle between two PSL rookies, Matthew Hill in the 90, and the 20 of Riley Spurley. Or Spurley having the advantage going into turn number two. And that dot on your screen is indeed a lap traffic. Lips in the nine car. This pack will fast approach him, probably off turn number four here at the rate they're going. But this race for the lead is still on with Spurley in the middle, forcing Matthews up top with Hernandez getting a strong run on the inside. Don't check this time by Hernandez with the advantage on the inside as he has help from the 17 to Dan Mattiello. And as we come off turn number four, there's that lap car, Lipsy, right in plain sight. Where will he go? Looks like he'll be on the outside as Johnny Matteo get by him, but he's going to slow down the middle line, led by Random J and Nick Stand. And it looks like only the top nine or so will be able to get around the nine car of ease while everyone else behind them are all on the brakes, slowing down, trying to get around them. Looks like most of the inside and middle were able to go around them off turn number two. But unfortunately for drivers like Bubble, Ross McTrain, Joe T, Madison Chase, they're still struggling to get around this nine car. And looks like going into turn number three this time by all these drivers below the top nine, are all going single file, trying their best to catch right back up with the leaders and put themselves right back into this race. And speaking of those leaders, here they are off turn number four, led by Phil Torres in the 41. He's looks at the inside of Santa Vala. With Johnny Hernandez, Dylan Matthews on the inside behind. Gutierrez, Mullen, and Albert are just some of the other drivers in this top nine. So Hernandez looks for the lead on Torres coming to lap number 14. It looks like for whatever reason, going into turn number one, Torres will go up to the outside of the block, Santa Vala, once again giving the inside to Johnny Hernandez. And you see there behind this top four, Gutierrez, three wide in the middle of Albert and Spurley, where Mullen and Matt Hill are laying back, trying to avoid this mess. Coming off turn number two now. On board of Dylan Matthews down the back as she gets forced up to the outside by Spurley. One of those two now being side by side for second. And oh, you see another small dot on your screen. That's another lap car, that being Callan Baker. Now it's going to be a little bit until we catch up to Baker, but he's going to be a factor for sure by the end of this race, if not even sooner. Coming off turn four, it's Spurley back to the point of Gutierrez all over the back burn for the 28 as the both of them move to the middle. Leaving Alex Mullen as the new lead driver on the inside, coming to lap number 15. So far, it's been a very impressive outing from Spurley, making his first ever channel start and is trying to win right off the bat here in Tennessee. And there's Santa Valle there going three wide, forcing Hernandez to the outside. Mullen remaining on the inside of Matt Tiel right behind him. And oh, this pack is quickly approaching Baker than initially thought they were going to, which could potentially be some bad news for this main pack behind, but for the second group of cars, what about Nathan Stapleton and Jordan Stout, this could potentially be some great, great news. <laughs> I don't know if going side by side to lead this main pack is a solution or not, as it's not a guarantee at all that all these drivers in the second group can get around the lap car if he's this time. Uh, for four, it's going to be Dylan Matthews with the lead until Mullen forces her up to the track as we're once again side by side for the lead. With Matt Hill once again on the inside, this time helping out the one car. And oh yeah, we're going to catch up to Baker probably in the next half a lap or less. But coming back to the line to complete lap number 15, Mullen very well beats Matt Hill back to the line. And you see that second group of cars fast approaching, but here comes Baker once again slowing down the middle going into turn number one. He's going to really screw up Jose Angel Gutierrez and Santa Valla as here comes the second group of cars right behind the main pack. And oh my god, Baker off turn number two is going to move down to the inside. He's going to really, really slow down these second group of drivers that just now caught up to the rest of the leaders. For Baker moves back up to the middle, once again opening the door for the inside wall by Hernandez and Madison Chase. Baker continuing to hold up the rest of this pack going into the trioval. As once again, we have another breakaway of just a handful of cars. Looks like only five cars were able to break away from the 21, that being Mattiello, Torres, Albert, alongside Matthews and Mullen. As for some of the other drivers that are able to break away, Riley Spurrow in the 28, those six to Madison Chase, alongside Brandon Carruthers as he's three wide of Keith Charles and Johnny Hernandez there. Brad Ream as Baker continues to hold up the rest of this outside the lane, specifically Jose Angel and Santa Valo. Those have been, been held by Baker for almost a full lap as we come to lap number 17 now. And obviously, besides a huge wreck or something, lap traffic is probably the last thing that these drivers want to experience at these super speedways. And you saw for both Baker and Lipsy just how slow they are and just how much the impact of the rest of this field and potentially the rest of this race as of less than eight laps remaining here in Tennessee. 
But for now, going into the trial for is Philip Torres and NS Racing in control of this race thus far. With Dylan Matthews and Mullen right behind on the inside. But now going into three as Matthews looks at the inside of Torres. Can he manage the late block here? Looks like no. Matthews going to force him up to the outside. So once again, side by side for the lead. Matthews has been one of the very few drivers that was able to withstand all this lap chaos. And a win for her and that team will be absolutely massive, especially after a disastrous summer that team had last year. But obviously still a lot of time remaining as we come to seven laps to go. But for now, Matthews just led her first lap of the day. Behind Matthews are three wide for second, going into turn number one with Chase moving down to the middle of the track behind Mullen, where Jason Albert has absolutely no help at all on the inside. And there you see towards the bottom of your screen, both Reem and Crown are fast approaching, picking up Spurly on the inside lane, as it appears that those three are trying to find some momentum on the inside, coming off turn number two. As we're on board with Matthews once again, who maintains the lead, going into the backstretch trial And there you see Spurly peeking his nose towards the middle, almost making it four wide through the trial pool. And it's going to really help out Jason Albert right behind the 49, as he and Matthews are going to move to the middle. Brad, we're now trying to force Spurly to the outside of Alex Bowen way up on the racetrack in the one car. As here's Albert looking to the inside of Matthews off of four. Albert probably chose the best time possible to force Matthews up the track. As she's now on the outside in front of Reem. Jason Albert once again with the lead coming to lap number 18. But here comes Patrick Miller fast approaching on the inside of Felt from Coward Sus try. And just like that, nearly all e lap drivers are all back together in this pack as we have less than six laps remaining to decide this race. Here comes Sasha looking to the inside of Miller trying to force a three wide once again for the lead before Miller comes down with the weight block. But that might just be the very beginning of this inside lane as here comes Nixon and Jack Coss almost out of nowhere with strong runs going into turns three and four this time by. Random J now four wide towards the front of the pack. Nero making contact with Roberto Crown in his driver's side door. Off of four. Looks like Miller's going to move down to the inside of the block. Nixon's round goes Alex Miller. Brittany Crutter's into the wall. Philip Torres and it appears to be Johnny Hernandez also involved as we're under caution again for the second time today. And there's the heavy, heavy damage to Brittany Crutter's car as he went almost head on into that outside safer barrier as it appears that his chances of winning today are pretty much toast. And the same could also be said for Philip Torres, the 41, as well as the one of Alex Mullen, we see there towards the apron, and maybe the 46 of Johnny Hernandez as well. Now, one driver that actually desperately needed that caution was, ironically enough, Rado's teammate Bubble Pop in the 18, who during the whole lap car deal with both Lipsy and Baker completely lost the draft with the main group. And with this late race caution, this will put Bubble right back in the pack, potentially in contention to win here today. Anyways, it appears that time by Patrick Merrill was your leader, followed by the 40 of Nick Sand and the 57 of Jack Koss. But let's take a look at the instant replay to see what caused our second caution here today at Tennessee. So all this started through turns 3 and 4. Lost Brandon Carruthers in the 20 and the 46 of Johnny Hernandez on the center of your screen as they're currently 4 lot of Anthony Hernandez in 88 and the 41 of Philip Torres. So Johnny and Bredo nearly made contact that time by their off of 3. With Johnny backing off, no harm, no foul here. But then going into turn number 4, Johnny moves back up in front of Bredo, sending him, Torres, and Mullen into the wall. With Carruthers probably getting the worst of that exchange as he went nearly head on that time by. Take on this is slow motion coming off turn number four and very, very similar to what happened with Baker and Lipsy back lap number three. Johnny runs Bredo out of room with Mullen and Torres just being pure victims of an avoidable mistake by Johnny. And you can see I mentioned almost head on into the wall for Braden Crow. There is hard look towards the left or right front of Johnny Hernandez. Well, Alex Mullen and Philip Torres also put, took pretty decent looks into the wall as well. Speaking of which, let's go on board with Alex Mullen in the one car. Again, yeah, just very similar to the other one car of Daniel Voyles earlier today. Mullen just had absolutely nowhere to go, which is a pure victim of that exchange. Tough break for the driver who was up front for much of the day. Let's go on board of Braden Carruthers. And once again, Johnny just runs Bredo out of room, sends him around, and almost head on into that wall. Very, very viral look there for Bredo. And finally on board of Dan Mattiello. As it looks like he's going to barely miss it. A great miss there for the channel veteran. As his hopes to win today are still alive. Anyways, under caution for the second time here today in the Pepsi Summer Kickoff. 
as Patrick Miller, Nick Sant, Jack Haas, Sustry, and Joe T are your top five potentially for our final restart coming up next. Our next Palm Summer League race will see us heading westbound to the Sin City of Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the running of the Reese's Hot Ring Rumble, which will be on this channel June 7th at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, barring any delays. Anyways, here in the Tennessee Super Speedway for the Pepsi Summer Kickoff, we're about to go back green after another multi-car incident, this time coming off turn number four, involving the one of Alex Mullen, the 20 of Brendan Carruthers, the 41 of Philip Torres, and the 46 of Johnny Hernandez. For those latter two drivers, they will continue the rest of this race, albeit with heavy damage to their cars. But on the other hand, both Mullen and Carruthers are done for the day. But anyways, as the pace truck heads back down pit road, Patrick Mullen, the 33, and the 40 of Nixon are your top two, followed by the two rookies of Jack Haas and the 50 and Kyler Sus trying to 19 with Joe T running off the rest of the top five as here we go. The fans are all on their feet here at Tennessee, ready to see the final three laps here at the Pepsi Summer Kickoff. Great launch for Nixon on the outside on the straightaway, but in the turn number one, here comes Miller for strong run as the two are going to be side by side for the lead. He said Roberto Crown wasting no time going three wide while Nathan Stapleton and his Philly teammate Caleb Rose are going four wide going into turn number two. Off of two, Miller and Nick Sant remain side by side for the lead, but Miller's going to get a strong run into the trial of help from Jack Cost in the 57. These PSL rookies have really come to play here today at Tennessee. If they can win here today, it will not only be a massive upset to a lot of these veterans, but also the first time anyone has won in their first ever summer start since 2020 back in the Golf Summer Series in Rockingham. Here comes Haas, look at the inside of Millers. Those two are going to be side by side for the lead. With Random going four wide a little further back. While everyone else is trying to make their way up towards the inside, as time is quicker running out here in Tennessee. Coming to two laps to go this time by, it's going to be Jack Haas leading the way in the 57. But there's still a lot of hungry drivers behind going into turn number one. Those were five wide with Brad Reed, but Matthews Nero making contact there. And no next hand goes high. Houston moves a lot of ground on the outside, continuing into turn number two. Now, if you're Jack Haas right now, you got to block. You have to block the best you possibly can, as this inside the lane always gets really good runs, especially off these corners. And oh there, McTrain tried to look to the inside to Chase before she aggressively comes down the block. And as Haas moves to the middle in front of Albert, he and Chase are now going to be side by side for the lead. Going into three for the second to last time, these two rookies remain side by side with Chase having this foot advantage over Haas. So contact random crowd right in front of Patrick Moore on his side in the 33. This will bring the caution right back out. And for the second time in a row in the summer kickoff, we're going to have an attempt at a green-white checkered finish. This race is not over yet. You saw there the heavy damage on both Miller and Random's cars, as well as Alberto Crown Jr. in the 31, as both him and Random have been racing rather aggressively here today. And that right there was the consequence of that aggressive racing. We know we'll check that time by Dan Matteo in the 17 was your leader, followed by teammate Caleb Bros in the 59 and the 2022 Golf Summer Series champion Ryan Wilson in the 48. And just like that, in the span of just two short laps, Patrick Miller went from being the leader with a great shot of winning here today to now having those hopes being completely dashed. But let's once again take a look at the instant replay to see what caused our third caution of the day. So much like our first caution back in lap number three, this started coming off the trial in the back straightaway. Watch Random and Roberto Crown towards the right of your screen as they're four wide with Joe T and the 48 of Ryan Wilson. So Miller here is just minding his own business. But then Random and Crown make contact, move up the track into Patrick Miller, who again had absolutely nowhere to go. Takes a nasty, nasty hit into the outside wall. Briefly going airborne in the 33 as Philip Torres barely, barely misses the 33. Now let's take this one up above because I'm not sure if Crown came up on Random or did Random come down on him. Yeah, it looks like Random maybe moved down just a little bit, but Crown was the one that really forced the issue, shoving him, Random, and Miller into the wall in the process. Let's go on board of Random J. Yeah, again, Random moved down just a little bit, but Crown also came up as well, sending all three of those cars, including Miller, of course, into the wall and spinning. Those were two really aggressive drivers. Butting heads right there, Patrick Miller just being an unfortunate victim of all of this. And speaking of which, he's gone forward with the 33. 
So right here, Miller's minding his own business, trying to get the outside lane going as he's quickly falling back and losing ground. But all of a sudden, bam, there's crowded random right there, sending him right into the wall, right on his side as well. Anyways, once again, under caution here in Tennessee, as we'll be right back with you guys for our first attempt at a green-white checkered finish. Welcome back to the Pepsi Summer Kickoff here in the Palm Summer League at Tennessee. We're about to go back green after yet another caution that happened towards turn number three. This involving Roberto Crown and Random J, two of the most aggressive drivers here today. Both going into the wall, taking the 33 of Patrick Miller right with them. Now, fortunately for both Crown and Random, they will continue the rest of this race. But unfortunately for Patrick Miller, he's, he's in the garage and done for the day, despite being just up front during perhaps the most important time of the race. And of course, with that aforementioned caution coming up very, very late into this race, this means we're going to have one of three attempts at a green-white checkered finish. And with this track being a three-mile long track, um, caution laps only two laps long. So if a caution came out, comes out with three laps go or less, which of course did, the race will be extended. And once the leader takes the white flag, the next flag, regardless if it's a checkered or caution flag, will end the race. And of course, as previously mentioned, we're going to have three attempts of ending this race under green flag conditions. As for your top five, it's led by Dan Mattiel looking for his first channel win since 2022. While well, his affiliate teammate at Caleb Rose is trying to get his second straight Palm Summer League win. Ryan Wilson, the 48 car, your 2022 Golf Summer Series champion, also trying to end a long win with streak. While well, Madison Chase looking to win in her very first start is currently fourth. While well, defending series champion Brendan Beal rounds off the rest of the top five. Oh, here we go. As the pace truck continues down pit road, this sold-out crowd here in Tennessee are all on their feet, ready to see the first attempt at a green-white checkered finish. There you see Rosbeck train in the 45, wasting absolutely no time on the outside, going three wide for third, as the Dodgers of Matteo and Rose were side-by-side -side into turn number one. Now, don't be surprised if a lot of drivers, especially towards the middle and back of the pack, try to force their way down to the inside. As time and time again here today, the inside has proven to be the best place to be, especially off these corners. You see some four wides towards the back of the pack, but here's Ryan Wilson now looking to the inside of Matt Tiello. He has the fellow summer champion and Brendan Bill right behind to help continuing down this trifle with Matt Tiello quickly losing ground in the middle. But as that happens, Beal's going to force Wilson to the middle as those two are going to be side by side for the lead through turns three and four with Matthew Hill right between the two. This is some really intense stuff as everyone's almost locked together going into turn number four. Here is Jason Albert once again in the 80 car. He and Dylan Matthews have been some of the strongest cars up front. Can they possibly have a chance of winning here today as we're once again side by side for the lead coming to the white flag. One lap to go here in Tennessee. Albert led that time by, but Matthews going into turn number one for the final time is going to force the 84 to the middle. Now, if I was Matthews in your spotter right now, I'd be very, very concerned on the two very hungry rookies fast approaching behind. That being Spurling, the 28, and the 18 of Bubble. But now off two, Spurling's going to move down low with Matthews moving up high to block Albert. Potentially moving door open for Bubble and make a three wide for the lead. But no, instead, Bubble's going to make a three wide for a second. But here comes Jose Angel in the 79 out of nowhere, making a three wide for a second through turns three and four. Spurrow is going to come down the block, but will be enough to stop and run both Gutierrez and Hernandez have coming off turn number four. As it comes to Gutierrez once again, looking to the inside of Spurrow, this time forcing him to the middle. Off of four, Gutierrez will clear Spurrow for the lead, as he's now going to be three wide of Hernandez and Hill. But it's not going to be enough. Coming to the checkered flag, Gutierrez is going to win the Pepsi Summer Kickoff here at Tennessee. And wow, what a stunning, stunning upset winner here at Tennessee as Gutierrez now only had to overcome slow preseason thunder speeds, a poor qualifying effort, and restarting 21st. But right now, absolutely none of that matters as it's going to be party time for Jose Angel Gutierrez and the rest of that 79, 79 crew. Let's briefly take a look at the replay of that very, very exciting finish here in Tennessee. So all for two, Matthews at this point was the leader, but then Riley Spurley looks at the inside of the 49, but for whatever reason, Matthews moves up to the outside in front of Jason Albert. And there you see that pink car, the 18 of Bubble, almost making a three wide for the lead, but she backs off, loses the momentum off the trival. And there's that yellow car on the inside, Gutierrez in the 79, as he gets a strong run on the inside going into turn number three, above him Anthony Hernandez. But then right here, Gutierrez looks at the inside of Spurley, moves him up towards the middle of the track. 
And then once he clears him off four, it's just smooth sailing the rest of the way for Gutierrez. While the other three drivers behind them of Hill, Hernandez, and Spru, we go three wide with Hill getting credit for second place. And now Gutierrez is going to burn it down right in front of the fans here at Tennessee. Of course, a huge, huge graduation to Jose Angel Gutierrez and the rest of Gutierrez Motorsports Engineering for the first ever Palm Summer League wins, as well as Pontiac's first one in the PSL. But anyways, let's take a look at the finishing results and point standings after today's opening race. So here we go. Jose Angel Gutierrez once again gets his first ever Palm Summer League win. Once again, a huge, huge congratulations to he and that team. Well, Matthew Hill in the 90 is the highest running rookie here in the PSL, finishing second. Whereas veteran Anthony Hernandez will get a third place finish here today. We know Riley Spurley is going to end up fourth. Very solid outing, all things considered, for Spurley and that team. However, of course, they were just oh, oh, so close to winning here today. Good rebound for Nick's hand to 40 as he finishes fifth despite losing ground weight in this race. Well, Bubba Pop in the 18 finishes an impressive six. And I see Kyle Sustry finishing seventh, yet another rookie finishing solid here today. Well, Matt Frunen, the two car, finishes eighth. And there's see Dylan Matthews, who probably had one of the best cars when it came to running in clean air. But unfortunately, still have to settle for ninth place finish. Well, Alexander Vella run off the rest of the top 10 of another impressive outing for the Madhouse Classic winner. Looking down the list here, Jason Albert, who had another really strong car in Queen Air. He had to sell with, with an 11th place finisher today. While, Brent, while Brendan Beal and Ryan Wilson, the past two summer champions, were, up towards, were both up towards the front on that final lap. We'll have to settle with a 14th and 16th place finish, respectively. And there's the last year's summer kickoff winner, Jordan Flores, as he'll finish 17th. While Dan Mattiel and 19th were well, the most laps here today of five laps. And you see some other big names here. Ross McTrain finishes 23rd. Jack Haas 25th. Random J 28th after being involved in the wreck. Alongside Roberto Crown Jr. And Kellen Baker being the first car one lap down. As for the last few drivers, Patrick Miller getting taken out very late into this race. And the same goes we said for Brandon Carruthers and Alex Mullen or Daniel Voiles. Only made it three laps before having that violent, violent flip in turn number four. And now for the points standings after the first race here in the Palm Summer League. Obviously not much going on since it's only the first race. Gutierrez with the points lead of 47 points. Didn't quite get max points, but still obviously a fantastic points day all around for Gutierrez. Matthew Hill behind by four and second. Hernandez behind by six. He's actually tied with Riley Spurley for that, but Hernandez will have the advantage due to his better finishing position. Nick Sand in fifth behind by seven. Bubble Pop behind by nine. Kyle Sosha behind by ten. Burnett also behind by ten. While Dylan Matthews and now Santavella round off the rest of the top ten in the point standings. So next up, race number two, we're going to head to the Sin City of Las Vegas for the running of the first ever Reese's Summer Hot Ring Rumble, which will be on this channel Friday, June 7th at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, barring any delays. But as always, y'all, thank you guys for watching this race. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.